we're now ready to start actually wiring up the jelly box, connect the power supply, test if it works, test some of the components. And it's going to be a lot of different wires in several stages. So here's what we're going to do. First, we're going to connect the power supply. Or better yet, this is a visual guide of how it's all going to look like. First, we're going to connect the power supply, stage number one. Test it and see if everything's working OK. It's supremely important to connect the power supply correctly. Otherwise, you're going to blow out your printer and it's going to stop working before it ever was working. In stage number two, we'll connect the Y motor, the Z motor, and the end stops for that. And in the third stage, we're going to bring in the X assembly we already built before with all the wires that are already on it and connect all of those. So let's start with the power supply. This part is somewhat optional because you will need a multimeter. If you don't have a multimeter, then just observe and pay close attention to how the things should be so that you don't connect anything wrong in this part. You're going to need the power supply, the power supply wires with the power supply connector, the on-off switch, and anything that's connected to it, and a voltmeter and all also called multimeter. Any multimeter that you're going to have will have some mode that will simply make a sound when the circuit is closed. Ah, so when there's a circuit and it's closed, it makes a sound. Simple as that. So we're going to test our power switch, see if it actually works. Right now, it's in the closed position, which means that it shouldn't do anything. But if I now just turn it on, the same two contacts are closed, closed circuit. That means our power supply switch works. Great, so far so good. Number two, let's measure our power supply to make sure that it works and that it works properly. We'll need to switch our multimeter into measuring volts and plug in the power supply. It should be outputting about 12, 12, 12 and a half volts. Um, red is always plus. There's no good reason for it. It's just what people agreed on. Red is going to be plus. And the plus should be on the inside of this connector. So I'm just going to stick my probe right in. And then the outside is the second contact. And that's it. I have 12.24, but 12.24 volts. That's perfectly great. Um, ready to move on. We'll put on the power wiring onto the printer itself now. You're obviously going to need the power wires. And that's it. In most of our kits, these come already connected. And you will need to take it apart for convenience of assembly. This is the power supply connector. Goes right into the power supply hole, the whole size power supply, from the outside. Then I'll put on one spring washer. And a nut to hold it in place. The spring washer is very important as you're plugging in and out the power supply repeatedly, um, you want it to stay in place. To tighten this part, I'm going to hold it on the outside with my vice grip a bit and use the IMA 3D wrench to tighten it up. Perfect. The switch is easier because it goes from the inside into the big friendly button hole. What I like to do is to angle the switch a little bit, then tighten it up with the wrench. And by rotating the switch into the upright position, make it nice and tight. Perfect. Reconnect the wires. Aha. Uh -huh. 
And now we're going to attach the wires into the Arduino, the power supply to the Arduino, a major step. To help you out, we have these diagrams that are available for download somewhere around this video. There's also etchings on the printer itself. Remember, red is always plus. It goes into the second hole from the bottom here. There's plus on the etching underneath, as you can see, and there's also plus right here on the ramps board itself. The black one is minus. It goes into the first hole from the bottom. All good. And now we can make the wires a little more beautiful by routing them on this route. This may be hard to see in the video. Please refer to the materials available for download for diagrams with better clarity of where the wires actually go. <laughs> None of these have to be specially tight. You just don't want the wires to fall apart. <laughs> Great. Now we're going to plug in the power supply, measure that the plus is where plus should be and minus is where minus should be so that we don't blow the thing when we turn it on. And if it's all well, we're going to connect the LCD display and see if it's alive and well. First thing, make sure that the printer switch is in off position. Great. Connect the power supply. And now take this green part and just disconnect it. Now that now it's not connected, so it, it can't hurt anything, even if there is a mistake. With your multimeter, put red on plus, which will be the second from the bottom hole, and black on minus. And you should be getting, after you turn the printer on, you should be getting 12 point something volts with no weird sign. If it says minus 12 volts, you did something wrong and you need to fix it. All right, I'm all good. Plus is where it should be, minus is where it should be. Now let's turn the printer off in the bottom position. Put the green power assembly back into the Arduino and turn it on and be prepared to turn it off right away. Still, just sort of smell. If something smells bad, it's wrong. I'm good. When you turn it on, in the upper left corner of the ramps board, there's a, LED, a red LED light. It should come off and blink twice. All good. That means that I'm getting power. All is good so far. So I'm turning it off again and connect the LCD display. It's the utmost right position on the board. Right there. Fingers crossed, turn it on again. I'm a 3D Jellybox waking up. And I get the classic error, minimum temperature error. We'll talk about it later. What it means is basically that the hot end is not connected. And yes, it's not, so it's all good. I'm alive, I'm well. I'm ready to keep on building.